Assalamu alaikum, brothers and sisters. Tonight, we have a special webinar that ICK is hosting together with TIES. TIES is among the projects of Kuwait Society for Cultural Dialogue. Its mission is to empower Kuwait's expats through social and educational services that promote a positive and productive role in society and facilitates opportunities for intra and interfaith interactions that promote social solidarity. TIES is located in Al Shuhada area, Block 4, Street 413, Villa 67. Our topic tonight is Al Isra Wal Mayraj, the night journey and ascension. And our speaker is our dear brother and friend, Sheikh Ahmad Ibn Saifuddin. After the talk, we will have 15 minute question and answers. So if you are at Facebook, you can uh, send your questions via comments. And if you are uh, watching us via Zoom, you can write your questions in the Q&A uh, chat box. I would like to thank Sheikh Ahmad Ibn Saifuddin for his time and commitment to conduct the webinar. Dr. Ahmad bin Saifuddin obtained his BA in Arabic and Literature from Imam Muhammad bin Saud Islamic University in Riyadh. He holds Masters in Communications from California State University and his PhD in Mass Communications from Indiana University. Recently, he also earned a Bachelor's Degree in Sharia Sciences from Al Imam Muhammad bin Saud Islamic University. Sheikh is active in the field of media and dawah for over four decades. He also has vast experience in teaching at prominent universities and educational institutions worldwide and has taught as an associate professor in the College of Mass Media and, and Communications at the prestigious Imam Muhammad bin Saud Islamic University at Saudi Arabia. Sheikh Mashallah is currently working as the President General of the Affairs of Al Masjid Al Haram and Al Masjid Al Nabawi as the advisor and supervisor of languages, translations, and technical affairs. Without further delay, I hand it over to Sheikh Ahmed ibn Saifuddin. Barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Sheikh. Okay. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabiyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa tabi'ina lahum bi ihsanin ila yawm al-deen. Amma ba'd, I'd like to thank ICK for being again with you via uh, the social networking, uh, via Zoom and Facebook. I'm very glad to be back again with you. Uh, it's been quite some time since we completed our series on the stories of prophets. Alayhim jami'an as salatu was salam. Tonight we are talking about a very, very special occasion very auspicious and very miraculous in nature, something that is very unique. In fact, it did not happen to any of the prophets of, the, uh, of Allah Azza wa Jal. Uh, and that's why it is very, very special. And that's why there was so much uh, discussion about it in the books of history, the books of Sirah, the books of Hadith, and tafsir as well. And we know that this incidence of uh, al-Isra, which means the night journey, since Sara in Arabic is to travel at night. And Isra meaning having a journey at night. And then uh, we're talking about another uh, part of this journey, which is Mi'raj. And Araja or Mi'raj is to climb, to go up, uh, to be raised, uh, or to use something like, like uh, a tool to go up. And in this particular case, uh, there was an ascension from Al Masjid Al Aqsa in Jerusalem, in the land of Palestine, up until all the seven heavens, and then beyond that, which we'll be discussing tonight. First, let me say that uh, Al-Isra and Al-Mi'raj came in time for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Wasallam because he actually faced uh, some difficulties in his uh, uh, mission, Alayhi Salatu Wasallam. He came back from Taif and you know, what he uh, uh, was met with uh, from the people of Taif. 
They rejected him. In fact, they stoned him until he bleeded. His, his feet were bleeded. And then he went down to Mecca. And then in that year, Khadija radiallahu anha, the first wife of the Prophet والسلام, and the companion, the first woman who believed in him uh, as a Prophet والسلام, radiallahu anha wa ardaha, Ummul Mu'mineen, she died in that year. That is in the 10th year of al bi'tha from his mission. In that year also, the support that he had from his uncle, Abu Talib, um, also died. Abu Talib was a, a great supporter for the Prophet, والسلام, although he did not uh, embrace Islam, but he was a big support to the Prophet and a protection for him. So the Prophet وسلم, felt very uh, sad and sorry for what happened. That was called Amul Huzn, all the year of sorrow and grief. He, uh, he really uh, faced all of that. And it was just about one year uh, or one year and two months, uh, talking about from the uh, Hijra calendar, that the Prophet ﷺ, uh, uh, really was supported, was uh, very much uh, engaging in this great miraculous journey into Jerusalem in Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa and then to the seven heavens and speaking directly with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Something that no one else, no prophet, no angel had done to go all this way to uh, beyond even what we call the Sidratul Muntaha, which is even beyond the seventh heaven uh, very close to Allah. Of course, he uh, could not see Allah because no one was is able to see Allah in this life as his light, glory be to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then he really spoke to him directly, receiving his command, uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and enjoying this uh, great support and privilege that uh, happened to him by so many things, he met so many things, he did so many things. So in that night journey, um, although according to some historical records, the Prophet وسلم, sometime before that, saw in his dream that he was uh, going to be on, on a journey. Now that took place in, uh, in some time, and then when the right time came, which is at night, he probably was sleeping in the, in the house of Umm Hani at that, at that particular time. And then he uh, uh, went into Al-Masjid Al-Haram. He was in Al-Masjid Al-Haram when three angels came to him and they were pointing to him, is, is he this, is he this? And then, yes, they finally uh, made sure that he, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, was the person that uh, really is, is uh, the one to be uh, taken in, onto that journey. So they took him to uh, close to Zamzam, uh, the, the well of Zamzam in Al-Masjid Al-Haram, as you know. And they, uh, they gave him to Jibreel, alayhi salatu wasalam. Jibreel uh, opened his chest from the throat to the uh, upper part of his chest. He opened it and then he took his heart and brought a, a, a tray made of gold. And in that tray was, was a ball full of iman and wisdom, hikmah wal iman. He first washed his heart from inside and even for those vessels, the blood vessels within the chest, he cleansed it very well. And then he filled his chest with, uh, with that which was in the ball, that is Iman and Hikmah, faith and wisdom. And this is not the first time that he uh, actually uh, went through this. He, as you know from the history of uh, Sira, that he, when he was in Taif, uh, in the house of Halima, as-Sa'diyya, from Bani Sa'd in Taif, he, uh, he was playing 
and in his uh, in the neighborhood in that area near Halima's house, and he was playing with children. And, and then all of a sudden, uh, Jibril came and took him uh, away from uh, the children, and they uh, and he went back uh, away from from everyone. And then they started giving him. Uh, he started opening his chest and cleansing it. So that was the first time. This time again, he was cleansed uh, again, and 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 then a new thing, which is which happened this at this time, which is to be filled with this uh, uh, faith and hikmah uh, that he was, uh, mashallah, put in there. And of course, his his chest was closed. And then uh, al buraq. And you know the, the word Burak is coming from Burk. Burk is light. So this Burak was like named Burak because it was like in the uh, the speed of when, when he when he travels or when it travels because it is a uh, uh, an animal between like uh, uh, from the size of above above the size of a, of a, a donkey and below a mule, uh, but very white and it's bright in color. And uh, of course, when he, he he's, he's not known to the Prophet, peace be upon him, probably no human being has has uh, uh, taken or has has come over its, its, uh, its back. But then uh, uh, Jibril told the, the animal, spoke to him, to it and said, uh, you, the, the best human being will be on your, on your back. So he kind of like uh, got, got sweat um, uh, out of shyness because of what he said, uh, or when he when he moved around and wasn't happy that he would be written by by the Prophet peace be upon him. But then Jibril and the Prophet peace be upon him were tra traveling on that journey from Mecca Al Masjid Al Haram into Jerusalem, into Al Quds Al Masjid Al Aqsa. There they they uh, they reached there, and then the Prophet Alaihissalam got off the uh, al buraq and he tied it um, in the same place that the uh, prophets before him alayhi salatu wasalam used to tie their own uh, animals either horses or camels and then he went inside al masjid al aqsa he prayed to rak'ahs there and then uh, there was an incident either it happened uh, during that time before his uh, Mi'raj, or after his Mi'raj, which he led all of the prophets alayhi salatu was salam um, in al-Masjid al-Aqsa in prayer. He was leading the prayer and he know that prayer was was uh, was made obligatory upon Muslims and prayer is, is something that every prophet was asked to make, although the uh, details of how we perform the prayer may be a bit different from our Sharia uh, uh, and, and their Sharia. However, the basic concept um, is there. And some scholars discussed about this prayer. Was it, was it just only a dhikr and dua or was it real actual prayer? And according to uh, the authentic sources, yes, it was like an actual prayer of ruku and sujood and so on. So uh, that what took place. But uh, when he went there, it was just like kind of preparation. So all of these incidents were in preparation to be for the Prophet والسلام, to be raised into um, the heavens, into a samawat. Um, it was like preparation when he, when his heart was uh, uh, opened and, and chest and uh, his heart was, was cleansed and was filled with uh, faith and wisdom. And then uh, again, he was in, in, in the companionship of Jibreel alayhi salam. And then he actually uh, uh, led the uh, prophets, peace be upon them, into, in, uh, into prayer. He led, he led them in, in prayer. And then uh, actually he was giving two choices of two balls of uh, either uh, milk or uh, uh, wine and he chose milk and Jibreel said to him you selected fitra fitra is the natural way because 
uh, as you know, milk is coming natural to us either from our mothers or from uh, the animals that produce milk. And we drink it fresh and, and, and direct from the creation of Allah, from nature. However, uh, wine is made by people from grapes or uh, dates or other, uh, other sweet things that produce wine and he did not choose it. So he chose what goes with fitrah and that is by the guidance of course of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He then was taken into the heaven and you know this all took place during the same night. It wasn't really something of a time. Allah knows exactly the, the amount of time that they spent in the travel from Mecca to Jerusalem and it should not be because uh, according to the uh, uh, description in the in the true hadith in Al Bukhari and Muslim, uh, the speed of the uh, of that uh, burak is like when he would put his own uh, foot or its own foot to as far as his uh, sight would 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 see. So imagine how this animal was was jumping, and it was it was very very fast. Um, and uh, of course, Allah gave the Prophet all the uh, uh, support and and the confidence that he would not be hurt in this in this trip. And when he first started this, it was like between his own between like sleep and uh, and, and and being awake. Although the the hearts of um, prophets never slept, only. Their eyes would sleep, but their hearts are always uh, awake. Uh, subhanallah, they have their own uh, preparation to receive the message and not to be overwhelmed by, by sleep uh, as they were uh, made ready to receive uh, this, uh, the message and revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anyway, he went uh, again with Jibreel. He took him to the first heaven and they went to one of its doors. They knocked on the door and then the angels, the angels uh, answered there from, from inside the, um, uh, from inside. And they said, who's this? He said, Jibreel, who said, who, they said, who's with you? And he said, it's Muhammad. They said, was it, was he sent to? Meaning, was he called to, to, to come? And he said, yes. So they opened the door and they welcomed the Prophet Sallallahu and Jibreel. And as he uh, uh, went inside, uh, inside the heaven, he saw Adam Alayhi salam. He met Adam Alayhi salam. And uh, Jibreel was introducing uh, the Prophet Alayhi salam and said to Adam, uh, said first to Prophet Muhammad, this is your father, Adam. And Adam said, Ahlan bin Ibn Salih, one Nabi Saleh, welcome to the uh, 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 pious son, a righteous son, and the pious prophet. So it was like, uh, again, this recognition by Adam alayhi salam, and then he uh, would turn to the right and would laugh, and turn to the left and cry. And the Prophet asked uh, uh, Jibreel, why is he? Why was he doing this? And he said, well, when he looks at his own children, meaning the children of Adam, and those on his, to his right are the people uh, who will be in Jannah, he would feel happy and, and laugh. Um, but when he turns to the left, he would see people who will be doomed to hellfire. And therefore he cries because it really affects him to see his own children going into hellfire because of this of disobedience and disbelief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the same thing took place as he ascended to the second heaven. He uh, ascended to the second heaven. Again, the same thing happened. They knocked on the door. The angels inside asked, who's this? He said, Jibreel, who's with you? It was Muhammad, peace be upon him. Was he sent to? Uh, he said, yes, they opened the door. They welcomed the Prophet والسلام, and, and Jibreel alayhi salam, they went inside, they saw um, both Isa alayhi salatu wasalam and Yahya ibn Zakariya. And you know, Isa and Yahya 
are like cousins from uh, their mothers are sisters. And uh, again, he welcomed him and he uh, 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 saw him and greeted him. Uh, so he, he said, welcome uh, uh, the uh, good, good brother and uh, pious brother, pious uh, prophet. So again, he recognized him as a prophet and a brother. And then he went to the third heaven. On the third heaven, they saw Yusuf السلام, And again, the same procedure took place, which always they knocked on the door. And then the angels would ask, who's this? And then the same replies from uh, Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam. And then they would open the door and he would see different prophets. On the third heaven, they saw Prophet Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam. They went to the fourth heaven and they saw Prophet uh, 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 Idris alayhi salatu wasalam. Then they went up to the fifth heaven and they saw Prophet Harun alayhi salatu wasalam. On the fifth uh, uh, heaven, or Sama, they saw Prophet Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. They went up to the uh, seventh heaven and they saw Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam and he was leaning towards Al Baytul Ma'mur. Al Baytul Ma'mur is the house that is always lived by angels. And then, uh, according to another hadith, 70,000 angels would enter into this Al Baytul Ma'mur every day and they would never come back to it uh, until the day of judgment meaning look how many angels are there to look over all the um, missions and uh, duties they were given by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to perform and then uh, after this they went even beyond uh, uh, the seventh heaven into sidratul muntaha now, sidratul muntaha is above the seventh heaven, Sidratul Muntaha is a tree, a big tree, lot tree, and 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 lot tree is is a, is a tree that is known very much familiar in our area, in Kuwait, in Saudi Arabia, and and, and it's a uh, mostly found in um, deserts, uh, so it is familiar to people. However, it's a very very huge tree, like the the leaves are the uh, uh, like uh, the uh, ears of elephants and the fruits of that tree are like the uh, uh, as big as as big uh, vessels uh, uh, that carry water or uh, other other things that to be kept in. So it was it was so huge, and uh, he went there to that tree, and then of course that tree is a place where anyone coming from uh, the you know towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-arsh and al-kursi um, would not go down beyond that point anyone coming from earth would not go um, higher than that point however the prophet والسلام, was even brought closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then uh, as Jibreel came close to him and he he was raised to uh, uh, very close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then beyond that, he spoke directly with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, Allah comforted him, um, uh, uh, pleased him, and he was given in, in that place three things. He was given first uh, the uh, obligation of prayer, where salah was made obligatory upon Muslims at that time. And you know the story, the very famous story where he, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, asked him to uh, ask his people to perform 50 uh, prayers during the day and the night. And then uh, as he went back, but let me tell you first what he received beside the uh, obligation of salah uh, 50 times a day. He also received the, um, uh, the last verses from Surah Al-Baqarah, Khawatimu Surah Al-Baqarah. So the completing ayahs towards the end of Surah Al-Baqarah. And also Allah gave him an, a, a, another thing, which is a privilege to this ummah, that if anyone does not associate partners with Allah, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala will forgive him major sins. Even the, in, the, in the hadith, they are called Al-Muqhimat, meaning the, 
grave sins, the big sins that will push um, anyone into hellfire. So Allah subhanahu wa says, anyone from your ummah would not associate any partner with me. I will forgive him these these sins. So mashallah, three great things. And he's no, as you know, there's there are so many good things in the end of Surah Al-Baqarah. Towards until until the end of of the surah, uh, you know, maybe the time would not be would not be on our side to explain exactly how privileged that was to the Prophet peace be upon him and to the Sahaba and uh, it, it was like there are so many promises for forgiveness and uh, asking Allah not to uh, carry a burden beyond what we can uh, bear and so on. Uh, now, when he was given all these and he spoke to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he went back to the seventh heaven and then to, this, uh, to uh, the sixth heaven where he met Musa alayhi salatu wasalam again. And he said, uh, what, uh, what happened between you and Allah? And he said, well, Allah, he said, Allah, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, Allah commanded me to, uh, for me and my ummah to perform 50 prayers a day. He said, oh, please go back and ask Allah to reduce them because you will not be able to perform that. Your ummah will not be able to perform these 50 prayers a day. So he uh, went back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he spoke to him and asked him, Ya Allah, uh, make, it, make them less because my ummah will not bear them. He, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made them less into 45. And then uh, again, uh, he went back to Musa and Musa asked him to go back to Allah. So the trip continued going back and forth between uh, Musa and the, sixth, and the sixth heaven and to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his higher status. Uh, and again, he reduced them, he kept reducing them until they became five. When he went the last time to uh, Musa, he said, how many uh, were they made? He said, five. He said, can you go back and ask Allah to uh, even make them less? He said, well, I am ashamed to go back to Allah because he was so generous with, with me. And then he uh, decided, the Prophet ﷺ decided not to go back and ask Allah to reduce them and uh, it was someone called him on the back he heard a voice he said well these are my faridas these are my obligations uh, towards you but then you feel if you fulfill them you get the rewards for 50. so in fact they are five in in number but 50 in rewards because every reward is multiplied 10 times as we know this is a rule Alhamdulillah in Islam. So in, in that respect, um, the, uh, that night journey, actually he saw so many things and, and there was uh, uh, so many things that he saw during this. Uh, there is no specific report on what he, where exactly he saw um, people, dw dwellers of, of paradise or Jannah and the dwellers of hellfire and nar, na'udhu billah. But he saw some people being punished and people being, uh, you know, so uh, uh, pleased and rewarded for being good. And uh, he, he saw all of that. Um, then after this, he was he, he went back again uh, to the uh, to Jerusalem, to, to earth and to uh, Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. Now, if he did not, according to some report, if he did not do the prayer, then actually he led uh, the uh, prophets alayhim wasalam, in prayer as he was their imam because he saw them and he, uh, because the time for salah came in. So he actually performed salah um, being a leader or imam. And that is a privilege. Actually, al-Isra wal miraj is, is so unique to the prophet peace be upon him it, it showed them the, the uh, higher status that Allah has put him in and how privileged he was والسلام, by first taken uh, with this special um, uh, animal and, and way of transportation in no time. And again, being ascended into the heavens and seeing all the prophets والسلام, even described to the companions, you know, the way Everyone looked how Musa looked, how Ibrahim looked, how um, 
uh, Isa والسلام, looked uh, because he knew in description, but he never never saw them until that night when he saw the prophets. Now, Allahu alam whether he he saw them uh, in body and spirit, but uh, you know there is a great discussion in the books of Aqida uh, of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah whether he saw them um, uh, physically or actually was uh, actually the spirits that he was able to see by uh, the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he, he even saw them in, in real pictures. And some scholars said that uh, their bodies were taken from the, their graves um, in, um, in earth and then uh, again rejoined uh, uh, their, their spirits uh, in their, uh, with their bodies and they actually spoke to the uh, Prophet ﷺ because he saw them and he, and he spoke to them. You know, that's why uh, it was, there was a discussion whether the uh, Mi'raj actually took place um, uh, by spirit or by body. Was the Prophet ﷺ physically uh, transported to Jerusalem and then to uh, the first, uh, to all these heavens and beyond where he spoke directly to Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. Or was it only with his spirit? And, but according to Subhanallah, it was clear, and then he was challenged because it, it was spiritual. Because we know when we go to sleep, we can go and travel to different places. We see so many people, and we imagine, or we see at least at least the pictures and images of these people when we are in our beds, sleeping. But uh, for the Prophet Sallallahu it was different because they actually um, the Quraysh. Uh, challenged the Prophet ﷺ. In fact, when he went back to Um Hani, um, and it's still, it was still night, and he said, tomorrow when I go to Quraysh, I will tell them about what happened. And he was very, very um, uh, uh, anxious. And at the same time, uh, was fearful that they will reject him, they will even um, uh, you know, uh, disbelieve him, they will give him a hard time, they will uh, spread the rumors about him, that he, look, Muhammad uh, has claimed this and this, and who could who could believe what he, what he did? But Allah gave him science, even to prove that he was right, he was correct, because some of the Arabs, some of Quraysh, went to Jerusalem for travel, they know Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa, they probably have been there in that area. Also, uh, there were some caravans that were traveling uh, from <coughs> excuse me, from um, Palestine and, uh, and the northern uh, uh, Sham area, which is the, north, the uh, areas within uh, Palestine, Jordan, and Syria, and Lebanon. And they came, uh, they were coming back to, to Mecca. And he, uh, Alhamdulillah, Allah gave him some signs. And uh, they, 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 he actually told Umhan, he said, please don't tell me your people. He said, I will tell people because it is my message to be honest and to tell them this and alhamdulillah it's something good so he he uh, went on in the morning <clears throat> and he told all these uh uh Quraysh people and of course they started laughing and they started making rumors and and and, and spreading uh these uh, lies about the prophet ali and uh, they started asking questions you know how how did Al Masjid Al Aqsa look like? Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. It was night, but Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in a, brought even the image of Al Masjid Al Aqsa in front of his eyes, and he started describing it. You know everything that he saw: the doors, the building, what was inside, and so on. Um, and then again, they asked him about: uh, Did you see a caravan on the way? He said, "Yes, I saw your caravan, and it was led." by a, a, a red camel that will re and they will reach Mecca inshallah on uh, this uh, date or this this day and uh, you know uh, led by this uh, kind of camel so he gave them all the descriptions and they were they waited for that to happen and it did it did happen that particular caravan of theirs uh, came on time and with the same description of the Prophet ﷺ. even he stopped when these people were asleep at night, they were stopping in the way and they had some water which was covered. The Prophet ﷺ stopped there on the way and he opened uh, their, the covered water and he drank from it 
and put the cover again and went on. So he told them exactly what happened. It was very, very interesting. You know, all these details were given. Of course, that was miraculous. We could not imagine with our own, um, you know, human abilities to uh, say something like this would happen. It were not because of our belief. Uh, Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu was, as you know, a Siddiq. He believed in everything the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. And then when they went to Abu Bakr Siddiq, hoping that he would not believe the Prophet, and they said to him, well, your friend said this and this and this. He said, if he said it, he even did not meet the Prophet and did not take the word from him yet. He said, if he said it, he, I would believe him because I would believe him for something that even that is even greater, which is the uh, the news that he's bringing from heaven, from Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why would I would I not believe him going into Jerusalem and then going into uh, the heavens? So he believed him, and that was that was why he was called a Siddiq, radiallahu anhu wa arda. All in all, that uh, great event that took place on that night was really very unique. It supported, it showed the uh, 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 place of the Prophet among all the prophets. It went from Mecca to Jerusalem to show the connection between the two, between Mecca and Jerusalem. And that he, even, even the Prophet before him submitted and admitted that he was uh, a prophet that he even let them in in salah to show that he is the leader although he came last but he's the best um not distinguishing between any of them alayhim jami'an salatu wassalam but to show that um this prophet our prophet ali salatu wassalam uh, it has this very very uh prominent position by the grace of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even when he went to musa one of the things that happened on that on that journey, when he went to Musa and he uh, he said uh, uh, that young man, meaning Muhammad والسلام, would have even more followers than, than, than my followers. He was not, of course, um, envying the Prophet والسلام, but rather he was uh, uh, not, uh, he was hoping that I would have and receive the same uh, 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 followers coming into into heaven and and being you know uh able to enter heaven uh but this privilege was not given to me as it was given to the prophet Muhammad we know that uh the highest ummah that will enter paradise are those of uh the followers of prophet muhammad peace be upon him then the followers of prophet um musa alayhi salatu wasalam, then the followers of prophet isa alayhi salatu wasalam. so and then the rest of the, uh, the prophets, as you know, uh, some of them did not even uh, have um, any followers or some of them have had very few, as you know, from the description of our um, stories uh, where we talked about the stories of the prophet, uh, prophets, alayhim salatu wassalam. Um, the event of al-Isra wa al-Mi'raj is very miraculous. We could not believe it unless we believe in Allah and in the Prophet والسلام, in this um, world from the unseen. He's, he saw this world of the unseen. He saw uh, scenes from Al Jannah, um, scenes from An Nar, and he had uh, uh, seen Jibreel والسلام, in his um, uh, real creation with 600 wings and with his huge uh, uh, nature. And, and, and huge body and and uh, mashallah the way Allah created him subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, convey his messages from uh, his uh, the heavens to the earth and to but he because of the fear of, of uh, you know uh, hurting or creating fear in the hearts of uh, prophets he used to come to he used to come into the images of some people that he knew some beautiful uh, you know, human beings, uh, uh, handsome men that they, they know from the, uh, uh, their own companions. So uh, this was very, very uh, special to our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And uh, uh, 
Of course, last thing I, I need to address here is whether we are uh, supposed to um, celebrate uh, this. Uh, first, let me tell you that uh, there is really no evidence to show that it took place on the 27th of Rajab, as many Muslims believe. Actually, many Muslims around the world think that this actually took place on that night, and therefore they celebrate this, and they said, well, what an honor it is for our prophet to, um, to have this, and we need to celebrate and enjoy uh, our uh, uh, fellowship of the prophet, wasalam. but actually, this is not the case. The companions knew exactly that this was a privilege, and, and but never, never they uh, celebrated any of that. They never made it a special occasion. And uh, you know, according to um, the historical reviews by many uh, scholars of Islam, it is more likely that this place, this uh, event, took place on the twelfth of Rabi' al Awwal, in the. Um, uh, maybe 11th or 12th year of Hijra. So there is nothing certain, but more probably it, will, it took place um, in the month of Rabi' al-Awwal. Some scholars said that Rabi' al-Thani, um, and, and even they not they did not determine whether it was like five years before Hijra, uh, two years before Hijra, three years before Hijra, one year before Hijra, exactly before Hijra. There's really a great discussion among scholars on the exact date because Nobody was concerned to record when it happened. They just believed that the Prophet ﷺ was supported by Allah. He gave him that special privilege. They believed in it. Um, and it went on. Life went on and the Prophet ﷺ actually was given even the support as he migrated from Mecca to Medina and, and established the, the uh, Muslim community in Medina. And mashallah, from there, uh, he started to spread uh, the um, call of Islam into the Arabian Peninsula and then to the whole world beyond. So, mashallah, uh, uh, we're not supposed to, to celebrate uh, that particular event um, because it will be a bid'ah or an invention um, that never took place by any of the companions, nor did the Prophet, peace be upon him, um, uh, really uh, ask the companions to do it. But finally, we know that uh, Allah... Uh, made glory to him, to himself, subhanahu wa ta'ala, by saying, Subhanallah, asra bi abdihi laylan min al masjid al harami il al masjid al aqsa ladi barakna hawlahu dunuriahu min ayatina innahu hu was sami al basir. Glory be to Allah who has sent his own slave to show that he was a slave. And it, was, it wasn't Allah, the Prophet's work, it was Allah's work, subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was the Allah that he gave him that honor. Asra bi abdihi laylan at night from al masjid al haram to al masjid al aqsa, which he has blessed its surroundings. So we can show him from our own signs. And indeed, he saw so many great big signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to prove his prophecy, to, to uh, prove that he was a leader among all the prophets. Also, that he was uh, taking the leadership um, from both to Mecca to Jerusalem and then to the world beyond. Alhamdulillah, he inherited actually all of these uh, previous prophets and he took the leadership afterwards after they delivered their message and uh, completed um, their, their, their time and came the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. I would stop here hoping that I uh, fulfilled uh, probably some of the questions uh, that might be on the minds of uh, my respected brothers and sisters in this uh, session. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh, for this uh, beautiful rendering of this uh, miracle. Uh, the way that you explained it, it was like we were there as it was described to the people of Quraysh. Jazakallah khair. I uh, totally enjoyed uh, your, your you know, rendering of it, Sheikh. Jazakallah khair. And yes, uh, you did uh, answer some of the questions. Uh, however, if people have any questions, please uh, feel free to use the Q&A chat box at uh, Zoom to type your question. If you're at Facebook, you can type your question in the comments section. 
Uh, Sheikh, we have uh, one question from Brother Shafiq Mirza at uh, Facebook. Question is that uh, the Quran mentions Isra and Miraj in two surahs, Surah Al-Isra and Surah Najm. If these two surahs were revealed in different times, how can we say it was a single incident and not two separate incidents? Thank you so much, Brother Shafiq. I think you uh, hit the point there by saying that Yes, the idea came, the discussion was there, was he, was the Prophet ﷺ, uh, uh, made the journey once or twice? Actually, according to the majority of scholars, and in fact, there is a consensus on this issue that he was only sent uh, on the night journey and then uh, took on, uh, on this, uh, another journey or ascendance into the heavens only at one time, the same night, only one time. And then uh, uh, many scholars of Islam talked about uh, what uh, came into Surah Al-Najm and then the reference there is not to the Prophet ﷺ, but rather to Jibreel ﷺ. He mentioned the same event, but in two different places. Like we have so many in the glorious Quran where um, uh, a, a same subject would be discussed or uh, touched upon in different places uh, in the glorious Quran. So uh, uh, again, it showed the evidence that he uh, first praising um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for himself and what he honored his, his prophet with. And if you, if you know that um, this probably Surah Al-Najm was addressing uh, the, uh, the people in, in Mecca, while the, the one in Surah Al-Isra, or another name of the Surah, Bani Israel, the children of Israel, actually after this beginning, uh, uh, of one ayah, and then uh, all the rest of the discussion was about the Bani Israel and what will happen and the, the coming back to Jerusalem and so on and so forth. Um, I like so when Allah says, so look at this again mention uh, of Bani Israel throughout the surah and even subject after subject, or although the surah has different topics and, and things to, to address, but the, uh, the, main, uh, the main theme throughout was really uh, on, on the subject of Bani Israel. So look, the kuffar of Quraysh in Mecca and the uh, uh, Bani Israel there in, in Jerusalem and how they both rejected their prophets and how they both disbelieved in their, in their prophets and the Prophet Muhammad came with the complete message uh, for both the people of Mecca and the people of um, uh, Jerusalem and, and, and the greater Syria area, which is a sham, and then to the rest of the world, as we know that uh, Islam spread from uh, the Arabian Peninsula to the corners of the world. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh. Uh, at uh, Zoom, uh, Brother Fatih is saying Jazakallah khair. What uh, is Ziyad? He's saying, Sheikh, please start Sira of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, uh, at uh, uh, this through this channel at ICK. So there's a request, Sheikh, to start Sira of uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Inshallah, Inshallah. Uh, Hope, hopefully, after after Ramadan, says. We do have some other series and some work uh, that we have to do for Ramadan. So hopefully, inshallah, if we can do it after the month of Ramadan, inshallah. Inshallah. And ICK, inshallah, will support you, Sheikh. We are all for it, inshallah. If you could do it, we thank you in advance. Jazakallah khair. Uh, anonymous attendee, uh, he's saying, Jazakallah khair. May uh, Allah reward you and your family. Another anonymous attendee is saying, uh, did Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam ever saw Allah subhanahu wa taala? Um, I think I mentioned that, and then uh, uh, there is an agreement among the um, scholars of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, although some other um, uh, sects may disagree with that, that uh, Allah subhanahu wa taala cannot be seen in this world because He is light. 
and if he would reveal himself to uh, a mountain, how could any human being bear the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And we know the story of Allah Azza wa Jal, where uh, he was asked by Musa alayhi He asked Allah to reveal himself to him, to, just for him to, to look at him. He said, Lam tarani. you will not be able to see me. But if you look at the mountain, and if it stands still, you'll be able to see me. But then Allah revealed himself subhanahu wa ta'ala to the mountain. The mountain went into ruins. It could not bear the light of Allah. And that is a mountain. So um, the privilege in the Akhirah, Allah will give the believers the power and the, and the ability to see him, Jalla wa'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us this privilege and to be among those who see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the, the, the non-believers will not be able to see this, will not have that privilege. So they will be sealed from seeing Allah on the day of judgment. And part of the pleasure, part of the reward of believers is, uh, is to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment, but not in this life. Ameen. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh. Inshallah, that will be the greatest gift to us, all of us, inshallah. We look forward to that. Jazakallah khair. Sheikh, uh, we have about uh, four questions pending. Do you have time? Uh, can I continue? Please, please. Jazakallah khair. This next question is at Zoom from Brother Amin. He's, he writes, until the day of Qiyamah, none will be sent to paradise or hellfire. How was our Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa was able to see people in hellfire? Uh, I don't know about your statement. Uh, you said nobody will be will be uh, sent to uh, paradise or hellfire. No, we know that some people will be in paradise. In fact, um, the, some believers, the good the good believers, once they are in their, their grave, they will be a, a, a way, a door, or a window open to them from paradise, so they will enjoy the the the, the, the bliss. Um, the blessing, I'm sorry, of, of, of paradise while the non-believers would be punished from by uh, opening a window or a door from hellfire to them. So they will be touched by its, um, its heat uh, in their own graves. So we know the punishment and the uh, na'im or the uh, bliss of, of, uh, of the grave. Um, so that is one thing. Of course, uh, the Prophet ﷺ, even when he was uh, uh, in one incident before, when he was praying, and he saw he saw Jannah, and he saw hellfire, and we know that Jannah and hellfire do exist right now. And uh, actually, the Prophet ﷺ, um, when he uh, was able to see Jannah in his own salah, he went uh, in front a bit just to pick up some of its uh, fruits, but then he uh, was not able to. Then, but then he was given uh, the uh, uh, the sight of, of hellfire. He went back because of the fear of the, the heat of hellfire as he saw the flames uh, coming from hellfire. So uh, in fact, uh, yes. And um, in, we, we know that uh, the punishment of the people of Fir'aun, uh, Allah says, وَيَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَدْخِلُوا آلَ فِرْعَوْنَ أَشَدَّ الْعَذَابِ Right now, until the day of judgment, the, the people of Pharaoh are punished by hellfire until the day of resurrection. But actually, on the day of Qiyamah, uh, the doors will be opened for both uh, paradise and hellfire for people to enter in masses. Everyone, every human being will either be in paradise or hellfire based on their belief and based on their judgment before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh, for that explanation. Uh, viewer and Suzon, and I apologize if I'm, if I'm not pronouncing your name correctly, at Facebook uh, is saying salam, watching here in Al Andalus. Uh, the next question is uh, from anonymous attendee. Uh, can any person sleep and have his or her heart cleansed, or it is only uh, for prophets? Oh, actually, the way it, it does take place was only made for the prophet, peace be upon him. Um, I don't know about other prophets, whether the same thing was made to them, but we know this took place uh, two times. 
for Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Uh, and he was filled with Iman and Hikmah, as we said. Uh, but, uh, you know, you expect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you guidance, to give you support, to give you Iman, to increase your Iman. But the Prophet and Allah in the glorious Quran uh, told us exactly how to increase our Iman, how to cleanse our hearts by dhikr. Ala bi dhikrillahi tatma'innu al and by forgiveness, if you forgive people, Allah will forgive you. If you clean your heart from animosities, from uh, envy, from all the bad uh, feelings and terrible things, of course, you'll be, uh, inshallah, living a happy and enjoyable life. And Allah will fill your, your heart with, uh, with good. So the more good you do, the more ibadah you're involved in, the more remembrance and recitation of the glorious Quran, the better you, your heart will be. And uh, there is, I don't know about uh, uh, English, but I'm sure that there are even books in English and in Arabic, but there is uh, a great uh, voluminous uh, uh, work in three volumes by, um, by one brother uh, uh, in Saudi Arabia who actually talk about the, the deeds of the hearts. And he talked about uh, how how to treat your heart, how to increase Iman within your heart. It was really a, a great uh, book that is available and it's available free online in Arabic. And I hope someday it will be translated into English. But there are some works, alhamdulillah, either by Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah, Imam Ibn Taymiyyah, by uh, great scholars of Islam from earlier times, Ibn Rajab and, 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 and others, who really address the same issue that you're asking, which is, is it possible? And so we don't, please don't expect someday that uh, someone, uh, you know, uh, someone will come or an angel and will open your heart and clean your heart in your sleep. Uh, this normally doesn't doesn't happen, uh, but it does it does happen by you physically by coming towards Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and this will will be Ibn Allah Azza wa Jal will fulfill the, uh, this, uh, this dream by the grace of Allah. I mean, Jazakallah Khair Shaykh. May Allah give us the opportunity to make the effort, inshallah, to purify our hearts, inshallah. Jazakallah Khair. Next question is that uh, uh, in addition to uh, five daily prayers, is there any other gift that our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam got that night? Question is from told you, Rida I, at Facebook. Yes, yes, I told you. Three things, yeah. right? Three things. Yes. Uh, first, a gift of, of salah. And second one is the uh, last few ayahs of Surah Al-Baqarah, the uh, completion of Surah Al-Baqarah, uh, and also the forgiveness of anyone who does not associate partners with Allah, uh, even committing major sins. Allah will forgive them if they do not commit shirk or association with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in worship. So these are uh, other things that, uh, and he, when he, when he uh, sh showed him uh, in the companionship of Jibril, these people who were punished in hellfire, it is just to give us a warning against uh, the commitment of some sins like zina or stealing or eating uh, the orphan's wealth uh, without due right. And such uh, things, or backbiting, uh, all these sins that uh, the Prophet ﷺ saw, the punishment, how they were, um, you know, punished, uh, just to show the extent of how, you know, a punishment will be uh, for these people who commit these things. It's just another warning. So out of mercy, the Prophet ﷺ came with this, and, and Allah is so merciful, Allah is so kind. He said, please, Follow this right way, which is good for you in this life, as well as a savior for you and hellfire from punishment, if you follow this. If you follow my own commandments, if you follow the right path, you know, you'll be uh, granted good things in life and happy and, and, and tranquil, peaceful life, enjoying halal and what is permissible, what is good for you. Uh, at the same time, you'll be having uh, an endless uh, uh, blessing on the day of judgment and, and enjoyment. And uh, again, you'll be saved from these terrible punishments if you, um, 
if you do the right thing. So, mashallah, uh, so many things he, he saw and so many things he, uh, he did. Uh, he has seen so many of the great signs of Allah on this journey. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh. MashaAllah, tonight a lot of families are with us, uh, both at Zoom and at Facebook. Uh, Sheikh, just two more questions, inshallah, before we let you go very quickly. Is it true that uh, any person who never associate partners with Allah will not remain in hellfire forever? Yes, it is true, alhamdulillah. Uh, there is a, a, a guarantee that from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if anyone does not associate partners with, with, with him, that they will never be uh, dwelling in, in hellfire forever. They may be punished for some sins according to uh, what Allah decided, subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether what Allah decides, whether this will be for a certain time, for a certain period, for um, uh, a severe punishment or a light punishment, that is up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's up, up to Allah even to forgive everything um, and, and not uh, have a person go through hellfire anyway. And you know the description of uh, this as-sirat over Jahannam, this uh, pathway which is extended over uh, Jahannam and everyone has to path has to pass through this as in the ayah wa minkum illa waridua meaning jahannam that none of you would not be except going through this path Allah has made it obligatory upon him that he that everyone will will have to go through that now based on the deeds uh, on this salat some people will fa will go fast some people will go, uh, you know, walking. Some people will go running. Some people will go like crippling. Uh, some people will be uh, on their on their stomachs, you know, uh, moving. Uh, and some of them will not be able to move. And then the um, these notchers will take them uh, into uh, will drop them into hellfire. So Subhanallah, uh, you know, they could be all believers. But anyway, uh, even if they if they fall in in, in, in hellfire they will be punished for a certain period of time and then they will be taken out of uh, hellfire because see jannah is for those who are so pure so if if a person is so pure uh then they would go directly into jannah if they still have some filth something to be cleansed and cleaned they will go through hellfire for some time and then they will be moved to paradise, inshallah, as long as they are not committing shirk. But we have to be careful. What is shirk? And, and because shirk could be something very light and, and we may not recognize it. That's why we always ask Allah to forgive us, you know, anything that we, whether we know or do not know of shirk. So it's very, very critical. You know, even riya, which is to show, um, you know, people your, your work and to, uh, boast about it and uh, to to make people praise you because of something that is even a critical thing to to be aware of um, according to the author um, meaning it you know shirk could be even uh, uh, more uh, delicate than just a black animal, uh, a black a black ant walking on a very very slippery uh, uh, stone in the darkness of the night. Who can recognize or can even hear or see that uh, ant? It's even it's even more uh, 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 you know uh, critical or more even uh, smaller than all of this. Uh, you could not, sometimes you don't see the extent of it. The point is, we try to uh, work hard on really, really um, emphasizing Tawheed and staying away from all kinds of shirk, all kinds of bid'ahs, all kinds of things that will lead us away from the straight path in order to purify our Iman and to be really solid in our Tawheed and commitment. Uh, uh, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Jazakallah khair, Sheikh. May Allah make us all among those who will, inshallah, directly go to Jannatul Firdaus. Jazakallah khair. Last one from uh, Brother Meer at uh, Zoom. Mashallah, great lecture. Jazakallah khair. Is there any good book you could recommend on this topic? Uh, there are many, by the way, many, but uh, my own references were really basically in Arabic. I went back to Sheikh uh, Safi Din al Mubarak Furi in uh, his book. Uh, in the seer of the Prophet, peace be upon him. I went back to some uh, other uh, books, Seerah uh, to Khair al Bashar. Um, there are some, some uh, books that were written uh, by others, but uh, I'm not, you know, depending on every one source because sometimes um, one source has, has good historical uh, facts, some other. Uh, books has uh, like good uh, uh, orientation and, and really authentic reports. Um, but the hadiths are found in both Bukhari and Muslim. You can search on Asra al Mi'raj. Uh, there are some lectures by uh, scholars um, in Arabic on, on YouTube uh, in Arabic. Uh, in English, maybe uh, uh, Sheikh uh, Ismail Mink, uh, probably I think you all of you know him. He had a, a good lecture. Uh, on Israel Mi'raj and many others, but at least at least there are many, many uh, that you can go back to. And everyone uh, talked about it from his own point of view, what is suitable to his own audience at, at the time when he when it was delivered. So there are many, many sources and um, you can always consult, but make sure that you get you, you get the information from the right and authentic source. That is the main point. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh, for your thoughtful and your detailed answers to all of our questions on behalf of the entire community and ICK, I would like to thank you. Jazakallah khair. Also to all the participants at Zoom as well as Facebook, uh, all the families that are attending. Thank you so much. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.